Hello and welcome to what is basically season two of Storytime as we are starting our new book. Okay, so the winning book of the vote was The Girl Who Sold the Elephant. Yep, it's only been published for about two months, but the reviews say it's really good. Miss Cornish says it's really good. So let's hope they are all right. Okay, chapter one. Chaya looked at the bronze spear pointing at her neck. Stop right there, said the guard. Chaya took a step back and held up her hand. <clears throat> the linen pouch under her blouse clinked. The chatter of the clouds floated up from the promenade below, where the king's annual feast was taking place. What are you doing here, girl? The guard waved the spear at her. From below them, the melody of the Viennes drifted up. The, music showed, the, sh the musical show was starting. Chaya shrugged the pouch pressing against her chest. She rubs her, rubbed her palms down her skirt and tried to keep her voice level. I'm just looking around. Her voice brought two more guards to the top of the stone steps cutting to the hill. This was how the royal palace was, palace was built. A network, network of buildings at the top of the mountain, every rock and ledge forming courtyards and pools for the royal household while they ruled from above. You're not allowed here, the guard said to Chaya. You should be down below, enjoying the food and festivities. Not Chaya. She much preferred breaking into the Queen's room and stealing her jewels. There was a particular nice blue sapphire in her pouch at that very moment. Well, the man jabbed her spear towards her. What have you got to say for yourself? I wanted to get a little closer to the palace, see what it's like. It looks so pretty from down there, she pointed in the direction of her village and made her face go all wistful. The guard sighed. Fine, just make sure you don't do it again. He pushed the he put the spear down. Anything past the lion's entrance is strictly out of bounds to the public. Chaya looked back and nodded meekly, as if noticing the giant lion, sta lion statue for the first time, even though it could be seen from villages miles away. The stone staircase carved between the crouching lion's paws led into a complex of buildings that made up the inner palace. Come on now, the guard gripped her arm, making her wince. He pulled her to the cobbled walkway, slowing downward, sloping downwards towards the celebrations below. I don't want to see you here again. The queen's jaws jangled in her pouch. There were sapphires, terminals and star rubies set into heavy shining gold. How many jewels did one person need anyway? And these were just the ones from the drawer in the rose ta rosewood table by her bed. Pity she had to leave so quickly when she heard voices outside the door, and then to be seen was was just halfway when she was just halfway down the promenade was just bad luck. She shrugged herself free of the guard and set off, her arms stinging from where his fingers had pinched her. In spite of everything, Chai had found herself gasping at the view from up there. The kingdom of Se Sendibri spread out around her as far as the eye could see. Thick green forests and strips of sil silver river, where the king's city below and clusters of the little villages below, be beyond. But she wasn't ready to leave yet. Chaya paused near the tamarind tree and pretended to look at the monkey on it. Dappled sunshine prickled her face as she looked at the guard, looked at the guard out the corner of her eye. He stopped walking but was still watching her. She heard him swear loudly. What are you doing now? Get out, girl, before I come and give you a thrashing. The sensible thing to do was get out of there as fast as she could, but the Queen's rooms were calling out to her. It was as if she could hear their whisper right there in the warm sun. The softness of the velvet rugs, the gauzy bed curtains dancing in the breeze, and the promise of more riches within the ebony and teak cabinets. Suddenly, a commotion came from above her, near the Queen's quarters. She heard shouting and the sound of people running. Chai thought back. Chaya thought back quickly. Had she forgotten to close the drawer in the rush? She sneaked a quick look over her shoulder to see a figure running down the cobbled path behind her. It really was time to get out. Chaya carried on walking as casually as she could. Her heart hammered at the sound behind her. She was just passing under the stone lion when she heard a yell. Hey, you! Chaya sped up, her bare foot scorched by the cobbles. Hey, I need to talk to you, girl! She had to get out and away as fast or everything would be over. Her feet slapped hard on the path and her breath came out in puffs. 
There was a scuffle of hurrying feet behind her. Chai hitched up her skirt and raced down the path. The sound of thundering feet crashed her, chased her. Heavy sandals pounding on the cobbles. She pulled up with a jolt and then she saw a row of guards racing towards her from below. She turned and ran blindly sideways, springing up some steps into the Queen's prayer hall and threading through its granite columns. Spears clattered against the column as the guards trampled after her. She got to the far side of the hall and plunged down into the foliage, thrashing through it and down the steps into the formal gardens. She found herself close to the promenade where the feast was taking place. The smell of frying sweet meats meant the, the food tables were just around the corner. Chaya skidded to a halt in front of two boys stuffing rice, cake, rice cakes down their shirts. They looked up in alarm at her sudden arrival and took off in different directions. Leaping away from them, she pitched, pitched into the crowd of dancers and musicians. The revelers were obvious were oblivious to the unfolding drama. The cymbals clashed and the bare torso dancers jumped and twirled to the beat of the drums. She ran through the band, clapping her hands over her ears to escape the shrill sounds of the swaying flutes. Stop her, came a shout. Stop her, the dancers paused one by one and some of the music pe petted out. People gawped, looking behind Chaya towards the guards chasing her. The girl, stop the girl. A man in the crowd lunged at Chai, but he, she slipped out of his grasp and ran towards the gates of the royal complex. Coconut flowers decorations tied along strings came crashing down as she ran through them, wrapping themselves round her like a trap. She tore them off and kept running. Elephants from the temple stood on the lawn ahead of her, draped in their mirror-studded rega regala, ready for the pageant later. In the middle of them stood the king's grand Tusker himself, Ananda. He was wearing his special maroon and gold garments, and his tusks were massive and powerful up close. Chaya ground to a stop on the grass and looked back. She was boxed in. She sprinted up and ducked under the mighty bulk of An Ananda. The world instantly going dark and dank. His man, man hoot gave a shout and grabbed her plaits. I think that's the people that look after the elephants and like the drivers of the elephants yanking her head back, but she broke free and rolled out onto the side. She sprang up to see the man hoot turn and yell at the guards, thundering towards them, as some of the elephants had started to toss their heads alarmingly. Stop! The man hoot waved his arms at the guards. The elephants are getting disturbed! The guards slowed down and Chaya took her chance. She ran to the boundary and dashed out through the gates. She was three. Free. Skirting the city, she headed towards the patches of wilderness on the east side of the palace the wind flying through her hair as she sprinted away. When she got there, she stopped and leaned against the tree, catching her breath. She peered through the wilderness and smiled. She'd lost them. Chaya shimmied up a tree, hands scratching against the rough bark. She settled herself in one of the high branches and picked out the coconut blossoms stuck in her hair. Lifting her linen pouch over her neck, she dropped the jewels onto her lap. They sparkled in, shade of, sparkled in shards in shards of bright blue and green and pink against the grey of her skirt. It had been a huge risk. Her boldest robbery to date, and yet she pulled it off. She picked a jambu fruit from the branch nearby and crouched in its juicy, and crunched into the juicy pink flesh, peering through the leaves at the royal compound in the distance. It was pandanomium down there. Absolute mayhem. The crowds were scattered and panicked, clusters of people moving in different directions. The king, standing out in his gold-encrusted waistcoat, had come down from the days and was roaring at his staff. The queen and her procession of ladies were being guided out of the promenade and up to the palace. The man hoots on the green were trying desperately to confuse their confused char desperately to calm their confused charges and stop them running a amok. In the middle of it all, Ananda lifted up his majestic head and trumpeted loudly into the blue, blue sky. How are we doing for time? Chapter two. After going home for a quick change of clothes, Chaya hastened towards the edge of the village to see her friend, Nil. She picked her way through the padded fields, turning back from time to time to check that she was not being followed. Ahead of her was the carpenter's workshop where Nil worked and beyond its high waist and beyond its waist-high walls, you could see him bent over his work. Hey, Nil, she said, stepping into the smell of the wood chips and polish. Nil looked up and smiled. 
then bent down again into the square of the teak he was working on. Stacks of wood leaned against the wall and half-finished furniture was strewn all over the place. You're back early, Chaya. I thought you would be at the feast for longer. Chaya slipped onto the stool next to him. I uh, had to leave a bit suddenly. You should have come though. The feast was amazing. She peered over the wall, the half wall. The surrounding area was deserted as usual and only a soft breeze swept through the paddy rustling and underside of the thatched roof. We have so many orders to finish. Master didn't want me to go. Neil worked his chisel into the wood and brown shavings fell at his feet. Chai wondered what was happening at the royal palace at, <clears throat> at that moment. She'd lost them, but would they just give up? Surely they continued to look for her. Are you all right? asked Neil. Me? Yeah, of course, she pointed at the square of the wood he was working on. That looks different. All geometric patterns instead of swirly designs you usually do. Oh, this is something we're making for one of those foreign merchants. There's a new spice merchant in town and it looks like he is here for good. The patterns are all like this. I had to use a ruler. Chai zoomed out and Neil, as Neil talked. How long would the king's men look for her? They wouldn't give up easily. Her hands snapped back at the thwacking noise. Her head, not hand, her head snapped back at the thwacking noise. But it was only a crow hopping along the top of the wall. Okay, Chaya, what's going on? Neil put down the chisel and stared at her. Well, what do you mean? You're all jumpy. What happened? You're not going to like it. Tell me anyway. It's, it's the usual. Neil sighed. And what is it for this time? It's VJ, one of the boys at the river. He was attacked by a crocodile when he was swimming. I was there when it happened. Yes, you told me. What can you do for him now, though? Neil blew onto the piece of wood, puffing out the cloud of brown dust into the air. Chai rubbed her nose. His family had been told of the medicine man that can fix him, and he might be able to walk again, but they need a lot of money very quickly. They have to hire a cart for three days of a journey, and then there's a payment for the months and months of treatment, of course. Neil shook his head. I don't know if I should admire you or think you're completely mad. This time, you might be, rad, m might be right to say I'm mad. Why? What's different? Like I said, they needed a lot of money. I might have taken something more valuable than usual. Neil stared at her. Which is... Chaya undid the pouch and the jaws spilled out. They clattered onto the intri intricate carvings Neil was working on, lodging in various grooves. The sapphire shone in the bluest of blues, but a sparkling pink ruby was a close second with a silvery star shimmering inside of it. Neil shrank back as if he'd been stunned. Chaya, what on earth? Where did you get those from? She picked up the sapphire and held it into the light. In the queen's bedside table? Neil looked at the jewels and then back at Chaya. Please tell me you're joking. It's not so bad, Chaya put the sapphire back in with the other jewels. Neil was always such a worry. He made things seem so much worse than they were. I don't think they recognise me. Wait a minute. Someone saw you. Mm, calm down, Neil. I ran away. I'm safe. Calm down. This isn't like stealing a few coins here and there. This is the king we're talking about. Queen, actually. Neil glared at her, so she quickly carried on. Don't you want VJ to get better? If he's not treated, he'll lose his leg. He'll never walk again. And anyway, there's someone else who could use some of it too. Who? You! Me? Your parents could have some of the money, so you don't need to work. You're 13, Neil. You should come back to school. I've told you enough times. I'm fine. I don't need any charity. Just hear me out. Not just school. You could even learn shank Shankar and the science at the temples. You could have a better life. A better life. Or your life, you mean. Chaya threw up her hands. Fine. So I might have gone a bit too far, stealing from the Queen. She noticed Neil's expression. Okay, a lot too far. But I can but I had to find a lot of money right away, or they can still treat VJ. She gathered the jewels into the pouch. I need to get these to his family. They'll leave tonight. Wait, Chaya, think. How is a poor farmer going to sell the Queen's jewels? And what happened? You said someone saw you. 
She hoisted up the pouch back over her neck. Oh, it was just one of the guards. He chased me into the promenade and the other people tried to get me too. It was a bit manic, but I got away. So now they're looking for you. Mm, yes, maybe. Oh, no need to look so horrified. I'll give Fiji's mother one piece so she can sell it on her journey far, far away from here. I'm going to hide the rest at home. The king's men are probably searching the villages right now. Don't go anywhere with those things on you. We need to hide them at once. Hide them? Here? Jaya's eyes swept around the room. High shelves lined the, lined the far wall of the workshop, filled with tools, pots and polish and wooden trinkets. Everything's so open. What about that box you showed me the other day? That one that you made with the hidden compartment? You still got it? Yeah, yeah, it's somewhere here. Leo went to the shelves and hunted through them. He brought down a small box carved with a two-headed bird carrying a snake in its claws. He opened the lid and lifted the drawer out and after some fiddling around, unlocked a secret compartment at the bottom of the box. Jaya emptied the jewels inside, first taking out a tiny, uh, tiny cat's eye pendant and leaving it aside. Scooping up some wood dust swept into the pile in the corner, she packed it tightly with the jewels. Neil snapped everything shut and put the box back on the shelf among the others. It's all right, he said, as if guessing what she was thinking. The master takes these every three months to Galley, and he's just been, so they're safe. Good. This will blow over soon. I can get them back then. Chaya hoped that that was true. She unpicked a few stitches in the hem of her skirt and pushed the cat's eye pendant in. I'll give this to Vijay's mother now. Fine, but go home straight afterwards. I'll head into the city and see what the talk is about. You will be safe once you're home. Your father... Neil stopped, looking trouble. What? What about father? Oh, Chai, if they ever find out what, that you took the jewels, your father will be in big trouble. But father's only a minor official to the king. Why would they blame him? But even, if she, even as she said it, realisation slowly dawned. He's the village headman. He knows the palace, layout, access, and that kind of thing. They'll think he set it up. They'll never believe the girl did this on her own. And you know what the king's like in a rage. He'll, he will have your father's. Neil's eyes darted away from Chaya. Come on, you need to go home now. Chaya followed Neil out with a backwards glance at the box on the shelf. The queen's pendant brushed, for her, brushed her ankle through her hem father had she accidentally put him in danger neil's unfinished sentence couldn't have been any clearer to her and we're going to stop there that was a longer one than normal but we'll quit it down maybe to normal